is that we begin to explore today's Torah portion. Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech, 
This is the week of how to be holy. And I want to remind you, Sophie, three first ways of being holy. Two of them are sitting right there. You honor your parents, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the most important thing. And then to remember that there's a day off. Everybody gets a day off. Despite what they're trying to do in Wisconsin, we still get a Shabbos. <laughs> we still get a Shabbos. And it's important to keep Shabbos. And the third thing that it says today in the first part of our, of our reading is not to make idols. So without any more introduction, I'm just going to give it over to Sophie. It has been quite an experience preparing for this moment, and it feels wonderful that you have all come and are here. Preparing for my bat mitzvah included learning to read Hebrew, discussing the Torah and Jewish ethics, singing prayers and songs, and learning and practicing my Torah portion. My Torah portion is Kedoshim, or how to be holy. At this point in the Torah, the Israelites have escaped from Egypt and are wandering the desert as free people. They have previously lived as slaves and are now learning how to survive, survive as a community and a society. They have already received from God the 613 commandments, not just the famous 10 that we all know of. Some of these commandments are repeated in Kedoshim, such as honor your mother and father, keep the Sabbath, and do not make idols. The portion then goes into more detail, explaining how to treat other people and how to worship God properly. One thing that's included, included in it is not to place a stumbling block before the blind. I thought that was interesting because there are a few ways that it could be interpreted. The first one was, well, not to place a stumbling block before the blind because frankly, that's not very nice. <laughs> the second way was not to tempt someone who has a tendency or an addiction to something when you know of their weakness. For example, don't put a tray of nice warm chocolate peanut butter squares in front of a person who wants to watch his weight. <laughs> Another thing that was mentioned in this Torah portion was not to reap all the way to the edges of your field or gather the fallen fruit in your vineyard. You are to leave the extra food there because some poor traveler passing by may need it. On one hand, the food is yours because you have grown it. Why but on the other hand, why take all that you don't need? It may bring in some more money that day, but a starving stranger will have much more use of it than you will. I connect this to charity and sadaka. You have earned the money, but why keep all of it? There is always someone out there who is in more need of it than you are. The big question in this Torah portion for me is, what is holiness? I think that everyone's opinion of holiness is different. I'll get to my personal opinion later, but first, I'd like to hear your opinions of what is holy to you. Take a moment and think about that and talk it over with the people next to you. Family and community. Sadaka. Respect and love. Respect and love. Well, from the table by the window, spring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of my favorites, too. <laughs> um, Kindness, co uh, compassion, modesty, and truth. Mm -hmm. Being present in the moment. Mm -hmm. All right. So many famous rabbis and scholars have said that holiness is something that brings you closer to God. But seeing as I don't really know what I think about God at this point in my life, holiness is something different to me. For me, holiness is being in a state of mind where I feel peaceful, open, joyful, or connected. 
an object or a place that is special can also be holy to me. These past, past months, I have been keeping a holiness blog, recording all of the moments that felt holy. I'm going to share a few entries now. This was the first entry to my blog. December 5th, 2010. This week, the holiest thing that I did was go on a hike with my family. Of course, at first, I didn't want to go, complaining of the cold and whatever else I could think of. But against my wishes, we went anyway. The air was fresh and cool, the birds singing their songs up in the trees. We climbed out of the car, crossed a busy road, and I still had my doubts. But the moment that we stepped into the forest, the moment that the cars and people disappeared, it was like a whole different world. The trail was a short one, up a small mountain and back again, but we stretched it out as much as possible. Clambering up steep, rocky parts, finding our way up nearly vertical small rock faces, and enjoying the beautiful views, we all enjoyed the trail equally. Finally, we got to the top. A breathtaking 360 view of the Pioneer Valley surrounded us, Amherst, Hadley, Northampton. We enjoyed trying to pick out landmarks, landmarks, a church, Atkins, our school. After we had finished ooing and aahing over the landscape, we headed back down, talking happily, our steps sure. Even after we climbed into the car and drove home, the amazing afternoon with my family was still anchored in my mind. To me, being with my family, being in nature, and being happy without cars, movies, or media is holy. I feel so clean and open to the world when I am in that state of mind. And here was when I painted my talents. February 20th, 2011. Last week, I had the pleasure of working with Nancy Katz. She has a lovely studio in Shelburne Falls, and the breath of fresh air was enticing. I was very excited to work with her and sketched a design for my talus on the way over. I wanted it to be peaceful and youthful, but I also wanted it to be timeless so that I could enjoy it for the rest of my life. 